Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Mad Max Fury Road is finally out, so we decided to do a deep dork dive on the whole Mad Max franchise and dig up some interesting things about it for today's episode. Here are seven things you didn't know about Mad Max. Probably. The imagery from Mad Max is iconic. Even Tupac and Dr. Dre did a take on it. But a lot of people don't realize how creative the Mad Max costume department had to be. In the first film, they only had a $3,000 costume budget. Luckily, a lot of Toe Cutter's crew were in a real-life biker gang called the Vigilantes, so they pretty much had their own costumes. For the Road Warrior, production had more money, but the costume department still had the challenge of upping the ante and creating even more interesting looks for the characters. They used leftover shoulder pads from American football, hockey gear, S&M gear, and whatever else they could find to create unique costumes. But he's just a raggedy man. Decades later, they've managed to continue to reinvent the Mad Max aesthetic in Fury Road and inspire cosplay enthusiasts around the world. I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot of sexy Immortan Joe costumes this Halloween. Just watch. The overall budget on Mad Max 1 was extremely tight, so they had to find creative ways to save money. For example, this guy was supposed to get thrown through a glass window, but they couldn't afford it. So they just built a door to throw him through instead because doors are super cheap. Director George Miller even sacrificed his own van for the film. That's his blue Mazda Bongo getting totally wrecked for this scene. Really gonna get it this time? He had his indicator on. They got the ambulance in this scene pretty much as a favor. It was just borrowed for a day in exchange for a slab of beer, which is Aussie slang for a 24 pack. As a matter of fact, a lot of people on Mad Max were paid in beer, since that's all the production could offer. The drivers of the two trucks in this scene did a bit better. They got $20 each and a slab of beer. Now, this was way back in the 70s, but that still kind of sounds like a good deal to me. I mean, there aren't many things that I wouldn't do today for $20 in a case of beer. I'd do all sorts of things. This semi in Mad Max 1 was another vehicle that they borrowed slash rented on the cheap, but the truck's driver didn't want to drive his truck over a motorcycle for obvious reasons. If you look closely, you can see that they've attached a false front to the bull bar of this truck. It's actually a painted sheet of steel done by the art director, John Dowding. This was their way of avoiding damaging the truck during the stunt. And now that I've pointed it out, this is yet another one of those things you'll never be able to unsee. You're welcome. The Mad Max franchise has always relied on visual storytelling rather than dialogue, and Fury Road took it even farther than the earlier films. Before even starting the screenplay, George Miller contacted Brendan McCarthy, an artist and animator. Together, they started on concept art for Fury Road, eventually bringing on two more artists to really flesh out the artwork. Eventually, George Miller's studio was pretty much wallpapered with some 3,500 panels of storyboard, which was essentially the first draft of Fury Road. The screenplay didn't come until after all of that, once they translated all of the visuals into a structured story. You know, with words. So if you haven't seen Fury Road yet, don't expect a ton of dialogue. Pretty much the exact opposite of any Quentin Tarantino movie. You have done this before? Many times. Here's something you probably didn't know about The Road Warrior. It was shot in sequence. Do you want to get out of here? You talk to me. Shooting movies in sequence is extremely rare because it's almost never practical. So shooting a sweeping action film like The Road Warrior in sequence seems even more daunting. But George Miller felt that the movie lent itself to being shot in sequence, so he went for it. And clearly it worked out. Speaking of The Road Warrior, let's talk about the dog. The filmmakers knew they wanted a real Australian breed of dog, so they sent the set coordinator's wife to the pound to find one, since she was an animal trainer. And she found this blue healer on death row. When the dog saw her, he picked up a pebble and knocked it toward her, inviting her to play. Once she picked up the stone, he was fully locked in on the pebble and ready for a game. He was so engaged that she knew he was responsive enough to be trained, and she picked him for the road warrior, also rescuing him from being put to death the next day. Good luck. Nice day, eh? After Mad Max, the dog wound up on a farm running cattle and died several years later instead, which is still way more wholesome than anything that happens in any Mad Max movie. Here's one last thing. You know how all the Mad Max films are peppered with various mutilations and people with physical deformities? Well, you can thank George Miller's medical background for that. George Miller was an emergency room doctor before getting into filmmaking. If you're lucky, you can hack through your ankle in five minutes. Go. 
fact, a lot of the terrible things he saw in the emergency room informed the design of the injuries and crashes in Mad Max. And Fury Road might be the biggest freak show of them all. I mean, look at these guys. Someone get that dude some chapstick. Woof! But there's one thing in Mad Max 1 that his medical know-how seems to have missed. Right here, we see Goose drop his bike on his left leg. Well, in this scene, afterward, his right leg has the cast. I guess George Miller is good at doctoring, maybe not as good at continuity. All right, that's all the time we have for today, but if this video gets enough likes, you know, however many enough is, we will totally do a part two on Mad Max. We got the thanks for it, we just need to know that you guys are into it. Also, let us know in the comments if you saw Fury Road over the weekend and what you thought of it. We did a review last week, so go ahead and check that out if you're still deciding if you want to see it or not. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out Cinefix.com and subscribe for more truish things about movies, and sometimes the original Madman, right here on Things You Didn't Know.